Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today we, Franciscans of the Immaculate, have the privilege of celebrating the feast of Our Lady, Queen of the Seraphic Order. And last Sunday, the Universal Church celebrated Mary's Immaculate Conception. Uh, this past Monday, on December 10th, we FIs celebrated the Feast of Our Lady of Loreto. Uh, that's the town in Italy where the Holy House of Nazareth resides. On the 12th, of course, was the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And today, again, we celebrate the feast, another feast of Mary, this time as Queen of the Seraphic Order. So that's four Marian feasts in one week's time. Uh, most of today's reflection will come from a book written by a Father Alessandro Apollonio on the litany of Loreto. Now with his motto proprio called Ob Singularum, on September 8th, 1910, Pope St. Pius X conceded, quote, perpetually to the sons of St. Francis, unquote, the privilege of inserting in the litany of Loreto this invocation of Our Lady, Queen of the Friars Minor. Queen of the Friars Minor, pray for us. Now, in that manner, uh, Pius X actually extended to the Franciscans the privilege of which was already given to other religious families as well, which is invoking Our Lady under the title of your, appropriate, of your, uh, your religious order. Now with that expression, sons of St. Francis, uh, Pius X meant, of course, first of all, uh, the religious orders who followed the approved rule of the Franciscan order, which comes from 1223. At that time, when it was proved by Pius X, that included conventuals, the observants, and the Capuchins, but it extends to us as well. It also included uh, the poor clares, uh, the religious sisters, Franciscan sisters, and tertiaries. Pius X was a third order Franciscan, so he himself would have invoked Mary under the title which we are using today. St. Francis himself wanted to be simply known as a, friar's mi as a friar minor in his life, which means a lower or smaller or lesser brother, friar minor. And he wanted his disciples also to be friars minor. They should be minor, especially in their spirit of service to the church, uh, particularly without ecclesiastical ambition, not trying to make a name for themselves or aspiring to higher offices. Paradoxically, in the contingent and the finite things of this world, you know, the comparative word lesser or minor actually goes below the superlative word of minimum. You know, of every minimum or minimal thing in this world, there can be something lesser. Just as on the other hand, of every optimum of er or of every excellent thing in this world, we can speak of something greater. Uh, the exception here, of course, is with Our Lady uh, only Our Lady is insurmountable. Only she is incomparable. There's no created being, being that can eclipse her charity, charity being the highest of virtues, and no created being can ever surpass her humility, humility being the lowest virtue and the foundation of all virtues among us created beings. No one on earth could ever humble themselves like Mary, and in heaven, we can say God couldn't exalt anyone more than he's exalted her. Why? Because only she is immaculate. And therefore, she's the exemplar. She's the unreachable model for us sinners. Now, the history, the whole history of sanctity is, can we say, or shall we say, a noble spirit of emulation of those who approach, of those who draw near to this highest ideal whose name is, as she revealed to us, the Immaculate Conception. Paraphrasing the gospel, we could hear even our Lord saying to us, quote, be perfect as your heavenly mother is perfect. It's not only that, it's not that Our Lady's perfection was like God's, formerly infinite, no, uh, but Mary in her humility, in her humanity, comes closest to the infinite uh, on the highest level possible be it in the order of grace, which is what we experience on this earth, or in the order of glory, which is what we will experience in heaven. It's true that we'll never reach Our Lady's greatness, but it's because of her greatness, can we say that she's ready, she's willing, and she's able to stoop down and help us in our weakness, in our difficulties, really in every aspect of our lives at every moment of the day. 
True love condescends, which means that it comes down to our level to help us, to accompany us, to bring us where it is. And we know this from Jesus himself saying in John chapter 14, verse 3, quote, If I go to prepare a place for you in heaven, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. True love condescends. It condescends, but it's not condescending. Uh, and so Our Lady is never condescending, but she always descends to be near us when we call upon her. The church on earth tends always toward incarnating the, perfect, the perfection of our sublime model, who is Our Lady, the Immaculate. The church is already immaculate in her essence, but not yet so in her members. And the Franciscans have always been a leading force in the church in Marian mystical spirituality. From the examples of the foundation of St. Mary of the Angels in Assisi, to the Marian prayers inspired by St. Francis, from Blessed John Duns Scotus, who's doctor of the Immaculate, to St. Maximilian Kolbe, her intrepid knight, from Blessed Gabriel Allegra to St. Pio of Pietrelcina, the sons of St. Francis have never ceased to develop the golden thread of Marian doctrine and worship, known as hyperdulia, which differs from the worship of God, which is latria. And even today, the Franciscans are on the first line of combat, fighting against the darkness of ignorance and error, which still surrounds the mystery of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The motto of the Franciscans who deeply love Our Lady is De Maria Numquam Satis, which is Latin for of Mary, there is never enough. That comes from St. Bernard of Clairvaux. As St. Maximilian Kolbe would say, even to this day, we still know very little about Our Lady. Uh, there's much more about her to be discovered, be it through prayer or through reflection or through theological speculation. So those of us, particularly those of us who are totally consecrated to Our Lady, we need to demonstrate to the world with our lives, with our fidelity to the church, with our spirit of obedience and humility and charity, that the Virgin Mary truly is the quickest, shortest, most beautiful, most secure road to travel on to reach full maturity in Christ. She's the best, surest, most secure road to travel on to reach our Lord. And so on this special Saturday, we ask Our Lady, Queen of the Friars Minor, Queen of the Seraphic Order, to help us be more and more true reflections of her sublime charity and true reflections of her profound humility so that we can attract all people to her Son, to Jesus, so that we can help extend as far as possible the blessed kingdom of the Sacred Heart of our Lord. Our Lady, Queen of the Friars Minor, pray for us. Praise be Jesus and Mary.